Hey guys, this is Steve Lund with another CG Geek Blender tutorial, and this is going to be a beginner's guide on visual effects in Blender. So in this video, we're going to be taking some live footage, camera tracking it, and then dropping a 3D model into it with some realistic reflections and shadows to blend it into our footage. We'll also add a little bit of foliage, as you can see here, to just really um, give the illusion that it belongs in the shot. And uh, as you can see here, we get a nice result where it looks like the model uh, is in the shot, but it really is not. It's fake. All right, so to start, we're going to be using some of the features from Blender 2.8. Now, Blender 2.8 isn't out yet. It will be out towards the end of 2017, but you can download the betas already. So you want to go to builder.blender.org, links in the description, and download the latest versions of Blender where we can get some of the new features like the Shadow Catcher, for example, that will give us some, some more ease of use and make doing this process simpler and easier and quicker. If you want to shoot some of your own footage for visual effects, check out the video I posted about two weeks ago on uh, 10 tips for filming visual effects. And uh, just a lot of tips in there for different things, like you want to make sure you have objects in the foreground and in the background. You want to make sure that your footage isn't too blurry, and etc. Alright, so without further ado, let's create a new scene in Blender. Okay, so in a new scene in Blender here, we're going to start by going to our Movie Clip Editor. So down in the corner, you're going to click there and then switch to Movie Clip Editor. Here we can open up our live footage. There'll be links in the description where you can download the shot I used. But go ahead and click Open, and then we'll grab our footage. And here you can see our shot. Like I said, if you're interested in learning how to shoot footage for visual effects, definitely check out that video I posted a few weeks back. But it just kind of covers some of the tips like writing down what the settings were when you shot your footage and stuff to make it handier and get a better result when you're camera tracking. Alright, so first we're going to want to change a few settings in our user preferences. So up in user preferences, you want to go to system and then scroll down to your memory cache limit. Now this is going to be allowing how much RAM Blender can use in the movie clip editor to basically cache in the footage for faster playback. Now I have 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to about 8,000, which is about 8 gigs of RAM. Um, depending on how much RAM you have, you want to change that to more or less, but uh, give it a good amount if you can. Now I'm going to switch to GSL, because that just renders a little faster on GPU, and I'm going to enable my GPUs for rendering. Okay, so before we get into placing markers and tracking this footage, we have to change a few of our presets here. Now I found that using fast motion worked best, even though if I uh, cache my footage in here like you'll want to do, go ahead and hit Alt-A, Alt-A, and you can see that this light blue bar is the cached footage, and as it's going through, it's caching it into the RAM. So even though you can see that this isn't too blurry or anything, there is a bit of fast motion in it, and using the fast motion tracking preset will just work a lot better. But you can see the shot is just kind of rotating around and panning around this this open grass area in this kind of uh, scrapyard pile, and we'll be adding a old car into this scrapyard. All right, so first off, we're going to change our tracking preset to be fast motion. That's going to give us just some better, uh, better tracks. It's going to hold on to its tracks better and not lose its location. And then a few other settings I like to change is if I widen this up a little bit here. Extra settings, I like to change the margin limit to be about 5 pixels. This is basically when the track will stop um, tracking if it gets too close to the edge. So really giving it a little bit of uh, like a 5 will make it stop before it goes to the edge to prevent it from accidentally sliding or something. Okay, and one more setting that we can change is the motion model here is set to location and rotation. But for a scene like this, without many square objects or square corners, I'm just going to use location. If you have a lot of like buildings or sharp edges, rotation might help to get a better track, but it really does nothing for a scene like this because nothing is super square in it, and uh, the rotation just doesn't really work very well. All right, so I also like to set my pattern size to 51, and uh, make sure that you're on frame one before you start tracking. So now that we're at frame one, we can start placing trackers. So to place the camera track marker, it's really simple. It's just control left click. So I'm going to start by just putting a tracker over on the window here. And you can see that we get the little display there and the tracker is on our window. So now I'm going to click the track button right here. It's also control T. 
and hitting that you can see that the track goes throughout the entire footage real quick and uh, follows that point exactly. So the whole time it's locked on to that high contrast point and tracking through the whole scene. So you want to pick a lot of high contrast areas in your footage to put camera trackers because that's going to give you the, uh, the solidest track. It's going to have the most information to grab onto and not let go. Um, you also want to avoid placing on a edge like this because for example this track would easily slide up and down trying to find what point to stick to. So putting on a corner like this for example is going to work better. And then getting tracks in the foreground and in the background. So I'm going to track a few things in the background here. Just putting a few more on this building, maybe one up on top there just so you can get a little more across the whole footage. Some in the middle ground and then some in the foreground here. So the more you can get in the middle, foreground, and background, the more you're going to get the uh, accurate depth uh, in your scene, and more Blender will kind of understand how the uh, how the scene is laid out. I'm going to go ahead and continue just control left clicking, placing tracks around. I'll place one over here, one over there. Um, any way you can find a high contrast corner is going to be the best, and with this shot in this scrapyard, you have plenty plenty of different points to track so it works pretty well in this case but just putting tracks across the whole scene um, I recommend 12 to 15 tracks at a minimum I, I like to go more because the more you have the more you can be kind of picky with what you keep and what you delete later on when you're reconstructing your scene all right so there's a pretty good amount I'd like to get some more in the middle ground here where we'll be placing our 3d model though it's important to have some tracks on the uh, the floor where your model will be going because that's going to make it a lot easier in reconstruction to get the uh, the scene orientated properly. All right, so just a few more markers around here, one right there. Maybe put this up here. Actually, that might work better. If you uh, if you place the marker and decide you want to move it, you can move it with G. So for example, if I place it here and I want to move it, just like in 3D view, you can hit G and just slide that tracker to where you want helps to kind of look at that uh, magnified area up there. And yeah, just getting getting some markers across the whole scene in different locations um, is basically the trick. It goes pretty fast and uh, it's actually pretty fun. Now I just want a few more here. I'll put one there, one there, maybe, maybe one here somewhere. Let's see if we can't find an area that we might get a good track. We'll just try that. Okay. So that looks like enough for now. Maybe one more in the foreground area here. Um, let's see where I might be able to get one to stick. Oh, we'll try one right there. All right. Now hitting A, and again, making sure you're on frame one, we're going to hit the track button again, or hit control T, and watch all of our track markers go through the footage and track. So it's kind of cool to watch this happen. It, you know, you can see them all kind of copying the same path once in a while, you'll have one that, like up here, this one just has a mind of its own and it's going all over the place. So that one's not going to work. We'll have to just delete that one. But for the most part, they seem like they're working pretty well. And then it makes it to the end and finishes. So yeah, this one right off the bat, I know uh, I know failed. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just try moving that to a new location. So I'm going to hit A to unselect everything. Grab that one again. And let's see if we can't lock it onto this corner here instead. Now with everything unselected, you want to make sure you don't select the tracks that you're happy with. Select just that one track and then hit the tracking button and it will go through with just that one uh, with one track you selected. And you can see that that still isn't working very well there. It's kind of sliding around a lot. So we'll just move it to a new location again because uh, if, it's, if there's a lot of errors in it, it's really not worth it trying to fix it. And it's better off to just try a new location and tracking it again and seeing if it sticks better. All right, so that one's jumping all over the place too not working. Just grab it again, move it to another corner that maybe it will stick better to, and then track. All right, now that one seems to be holding pretty taut, and that one went the whole time. So that will be a very nice, solid track. All right, now to kind of check to see what tracks are good and what tracks are bad, I find what's helpful is to split your window here, pull it up, and you have a graph line here of all your tracks. Let me make that a little bit bigger and zoom out. And looking at these tracks, you can see which ones are kind of out of place, like this one, for example. You can tell that uh, it's not following the pattern of everything else very closely, so there's probably an error with it. So if we hover over it, 
and kind of follow along this track in our preview, you can see it loses point of its track and is messed up. So we know that this one needs some help. So let's select just that track, go to the beginning, and uh, let's try moving that to a new location. Let's try back here. All right, now with everything unselected, we want, whoops, you can see I moved all of the tracks there, just control Z. That's why you wanna make sure that everything is unselected when you grab a track. So go ahead and move that back to uh, there and we can track just this track again. And you can see that that looks, well, like it was working better for a while. Um, not entirely, but uh, it was working better until it made it to the edge there. So what you can do is right when it makes it to the edge and you want it to stop, they have a clear option here. So you click this button here and it's gonna clear everything after that point. So we'll just clear that. The track doesn't have to go all the way to the end. It's gonna be helpful for when it uh, when it is in the scene. And that's just gonna be the same case for a few tracks, like this one down here, for example. We just wanna follow it until it goes out of the scene here. And then we're gonna clear it afterwards. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And we have a few more uh, spikes in our track here that probably has issues. So let's go ahead and check those out real quick. This track, um, yep, that track lost sight of its thing for a little, uh, its marker for a little bit there. So let's just go ahead and redo that one. And you can see this is kind of the process for uh, for narrowing down your track now and clearing out the bad ones, keeping the good ones. Is um, is this one here? Is just going through and. Uh, checking which ones are kind of spiking in your graph line and retracking them on better points. And in some cases, if it's just a little bit bad, like that was pretty bad, I don't think I can use that one. But if it's just a little bit bad, you can fix it, which I'll show you in a little bit. But for now, let's just try try getting this in a spot that it likes. Track that. Nope, it's still lost it right around here. So let's see if we can't fix that. I'm gonna to move to the point where it loses it right there. I'm going to hit G to grab that track and move it. We'll move it back to the corner there. And then we'll hit track again and see if it doesn't stay there. And yes, it does. So you can see just by fixing that one frame where it loses sight of its tracking marker, we can get a good track throughout the whole scene. So there we go. Now we have a nice solid track. Okay, so there's going to be a, a few other ones that I have to kind of clean up here. Doing that same sort of process where you find the track, this one here, for example. And actually, I think we already did that one. Yes, we did. Okay, that one's still okay. But finding the tracks like this one, seeing when they go off, if they go off, that one actually seems like it holds this spot very well, and uh, just correcting them. So I'm look, looking like, well, this one's not very good, but I'm kind of narrowing them down. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this out using the same methods described. Um, if it's not working, move it to a different spot. If it's almost working, well, just try fixing that one spot and uh, seeing if you can't get a better track. So that one's just not working there. Um, so I could work with this track or I could just move it to an entire new location and try it from there. So track that. And that one still slid around a little bit, as you can see there. So let's try moving it uh, well, down here. Going, whoops, going to the beginning, moving it down here and then tracking. Well, and that one's just not working very well. So if you get frustrated with the track, just delete it. You might not need that extra bit of information anyways. And uh, one bad track is gonna ruin the whole batch, so just don't worry about it. So um, now that most of my tracks are good, I'm gonna go ahead and save my footage here. And uh, now I can kind of start doing some solving to find out which tracks are really bad and which tracks are, uh, are actually gonna be usable. Um, so to do this, what you're going to do is select all of your tracks. And first we have to set up our camera settings. So this is why in my previous video I said it's important to write down your settings. Because here you're going to want to put your settings into Blender for solving it. And this is the sensor size of your camera. So I have a 4.3 for this footage here. If you don't know what your footage is, you'll want to Google that and look it up. All right, and then the lens was shot at a 14 millimeter. So I'm going to go ahead and hit 14 for that. And then this is just distortion um, settings, which I like to have Blender automatically calculate. So we'll leave it at that. And uh, let's see what we get when we try and solve our camera motion. So to do this, we're gonna switch to the solve tab right here. Clicking that, we can go solve camera motion. But first, we're gonna wanna give it a keyframe. Now keyframes are basically just a point in footage 
where between two clips it kind of recognizes that kind of movement um, as a like a perspective change or something so it's just kind of like it's kind of guessing what's going to work best to get the best solve here um, in my experience sometimes just playing with different numbers gives you best results but I'm going to go ahead and just grab this motion here and this is kind of between frame 170 so preframe B will be 170 and 140 and we'll see how that's working so if you go solve camera motion now we can see that we got a solve error of 195 that is terrible <laughs> we can do better than that so let's try uh, let's try a different point in footage so the keyframes are the first things you want to kind of mess around with and see if that is the reason for the bad track so i'm going to change that to 140 and 80. so that's just jumping back in time whoops i can't get that that zero jumping back in time a little bit here and we'll see how that looks and you can see we're down to an 8. So just kind of playing around with the keyframing is a big factor. I'm going to go ahead and tweak that a little bit more. We'll change it to, say, 50 and see if that gets better or worse. Well, that gets a lot worse. So you want to increase your keyframe size. 70, still worse. 80 is what we're at. So now we'll try 90. And that's still bad. So it likes keyframe 80. Like I said, there's just a little bit of random luck in the keyframes. Playing around with them, you can get something that works well. And then let's see if keyframe B going smaller gets better or not. Like it's worse. So we'll go bigger, 145. And that gets a little better, 150. And it seems like it's staying about the same now. So we'll try 160. And that's worse. So we'll stay at 150 and 80. And that gives us a pretty good solve track there. So now what else we can do is have it refine the K1 and K2. That's basically the distortions, the lens. So have it solve that, and you can see that it gets a little bit better if they uh, solve error. Now sometimes having Blender automatically choose what it thinks the correct focal length is will be beneficial. So we'll try that and see if doing that doesn't improve our score of 8.01 or 8.05 a little bit. And you can see that gives us a much worse result. So putting that back to K1, K2, and uh, making sure that the focal length is what we have set there at 14 millimeter is going to give us the best solve. Now you can see that that's just giving me kind of random results. It's kind of freaking out a little bit. And sometimes just changing the keyframes a lot by having it say automatically solve the keyframes. Usually this is a terrible option, but we'll just do it now to kind of change it up and then take that back and put what we had in there, 80 and 140. We'll kind of reset it and you'll get your score back. Except this time it's not doing that. Come on. Let's see here. There we go. 80.6. Now this blue line is kind of what it thinks the track is. And when it kind of spikes, you can see that it thinks the track is off a little bit. And when it's uh, when it's straighter, it means you have a more even track. So it's not very straight. So there's definitely some uh, solving that needs to be done here. So to, uh, to kind of clean up our clips, we can go to the cleanup menu here. And we can select frames that have an error of, let's say, more than 12. So changing this to making sure it's set to select, we can set the error to 12 and then say clean tracks. And you want to make sure everything is unselected first, then click clean tracks. And you can see that these right here, it thinks are pretty bad tracks. So let's kind of grab that track here, look at our preview there and scroll through. And yep, that's a terrible track. So that could be one of the uh, issues to our, uh, our high error. So I'm just going to retrack this one by grabbing it and moving it to a new point here and tracking. So I'm going to have to switch back to track here or hit control T and track that through. And you can see that that looks like it's whoops. I'm tracking all those tracks. That's fine. But um, you can see that's a much better track. You can see also that I accidentally tracked these two again, but that's fine. Um, I just have a duplicate here. It looks like so I can delete one of those. All right. Now this track is um, well, it's actually pretty okay, I think. It, it moves around a little bit, but I think it will be okay. All right, so let's go ahead and go solve camera motion again, and we should have a better error. You can see we're way down to 4.2 now, so that was quite a bit better. So again, though, let's go ahead and clean tracks with an error now of 8 or more. So change that to 8, click clean tracks. You can see this one. This one's terrible. It's just messing up our whole footage, so we'll just delete it. I don't even want to worry about that track. All right, and so now we can jump to the beginning again, solve camera motion. 
we're down to 2.3 so that's getting close to being acceptable actually so now we can kind of uh, do the same thing dropping our air down now to about five and cleaning tracks that have uh, an air of five or more and you can see this one's jumping around so that's why I grabbed that one and we just need to kind of relocate this track a little bit I'll try putting it over on the other side here and tracking it through control T and it's still kind of sliding around so it's not gonna work we'll have to uh, jump back to the beginning here and let's try moving it down to the bottom or let's try going to one of these in here all right control T that one's terrible it's can't find that at all. So just try a different point. Let's try it down here. Control T. And you can see there it looks like it's locked on much better. So that will be a much more solid track all the way to the end. And if we check our camera motion now, you guessed it, we're going to be better. So we're at almost below two. That's looking pretty good. Let's clean our tracks again. You can see we have one here that it thinks is bad. And yes, it is. So you can tell it the Blender camera tracker is quite smart. It knows when something went wrong, and uh, most times we will find it. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to the point here. Let's see if we can't control T, get a better track out of that. That looks pretty solid. A much better track. So let's go ahead and solve our camera motion again. And now we're up a little higher. So that is, again, just kind of the random randomness of it. Sometimes we'll jump around in you a little bit, but uh, that's fine. We'll just kind of find out what is higher than 8. And we'll fix it. So this one here it thinks is pretty bad, but it's actually not terrible. I think our tracks are actually getting pretty clean now, um, and it might just be changing our keyframes at this point to get uh, a better solve. Let's see what this one here did. This one I was wondering about on the ground there. Well, it's actually pretty solid. Okay, so let's save our footage and let's play with our keyframes a little bit here, seeing if we can't get that lower now. And there we go, we're down to 1.3. Let's see if we can't push it any further by going to 90. And we're back to 4. So right around there, we get a 1.3, and that's in the acceptable range. So with that set, um, I think our tracks are pretty clean. Let's go to an air of 2, clean tracks, and just check the ones that it finds to see if we have any problems with it. Let's see, does this one move around too much? Uh, that one's pretty solid. Alright, let's try one of these other ones that I found. This one here, for example. Alright, these are ones that just kind of jump around a little bit, but really aren't too bad. You can see right there it jumps. And uh, so I might want to fix that just by going to the frame before it jumps. And then to the frame where it jumps, hitting G, pulling it back to match it up like the frame before it. Using the arrow keys to kind of jump back and forth, and then Control t Make sure everything else is unselected, control T, and finish that track out. And that looks a little bit more solid. Let's see if our solve error goes down at all by solving the camera motion again. And it went up. So again, change your keyframes a little bit and seeing if you can't get it back down. Uh, it's just a little random. I'm not exactly sure why it does that, but it will happen to you from time to time. And don't panic. You can get it back. Okay. So um, I think that this is a track now that will be good enough to work with. It looks like all of our tracks are quite stable. They all look pretty similar. Let's check this one here. Yep, looks pretty good. And uh, we should be ready to start dropping uh, footage into it. A 1.3 is in the acceptable range in my book. And uh, you could do more refining if you wanted. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So save our footage and let's move on to the next step. Okay, so first we're going to want to switch to Cycles Render, because we'll be doing this in Cycles. And then in our Setup here, in the Solve tab, we can scroll down and Set as Background. That's going to put our footage as a camera background, which will uh, make it more appropriate for us, to, or not more more uh, intuitive for us to work with. And then we're going to want to set up some tracking perimeters here. So you can click Set Up Tracking Scene, and whoop, it's having a problem with that right now. Um, that's fine, we don't need that. Just forget about that. <laughs> Um, that might be something to do with the beta air right now, but let's set up some orientation then So this is like setting the scale and uh, Floor is gonna be our main goal here So for scale just pick two tracks that you kind of know the distance between now I know this is about a meter and this is in meters. So we'll go ahead and set the scale to that and then for the floor 
that's going to be important. Let's grab three tracks. You need three different tracks to kind of find the floor. We'll grab those. And uh, I like to switch to 3D view here and go to camera view. And um, if I go set as background, yeah, we get our footage back there. I had to do that again. Not sure why, um, but just do that. And then go set as floor. And you can see this kind of changes the orientation. Now that's not, not perfect. So I'll try these three tracks. Set as floor. Oops, I need only three. Set floor. And that looks a bit better. Um, let's try this track here though. Let's see if that one works better. All right, that looks pretty good. You can see it's getting uh, it's getting pretty close to our floor. Now uh, the scale is still a little big in my opinion. So let's try setting the scale to these two. And it's a little smaller. It's a little better. Um, maybe the floor would be better with these three. Um, eh, not quite. Did I set scale or floor? All right, so let's just kind of continue finding the floor out of these. Not really getting a great result, but we might have to just make one of these work. Okay, we can uh, we can tweak this now in 3D view. So with our camera selected, let's um, kind of rotate this to fit the floor a little bit better. I'm just kind of hitting double tapping R and lining up the axes to match up on our grid floor a little bit better. Something like that. Basically you want the grid floor to kind of match the orientation of uh, your scene. So in perspective to what the camera is at, you want the grid floor to be basically the floor and that looks pretty good there. So let's go ahead and save and uh, we can do a little test here actually by grabbing our cube, kind of lifting it up onto the grid floor. Let's go to the side view here, scaling it down a bit. All right, placing it right about there and then seeing how it sticks to your scene. Now you can see there's actually a, quite a bit of sliding. So the problem for that is that our scene is not orientated properly with our, uh, our grid. And you can tell if you go to side view here, let me just kind of jump out, that the tracking markers, which should be the ground for the grid floor, is uh, not reaching it. So because of scale, um, calculations in our tracking scene weren't really working properly, we can just grab our camera and scale manually. I'm going to scale that up a bit. And then I'm going to hit G and drop it down. So these tracks that we know are kind of on the floor and on the grass are going to be online with that green bar. So right around there is going to be a bit better. All right. So now if I, I might also just want to do a slight bit of rotating there, something like that. So now if I go to camera view and I play this back, you can see that that cube sticks to our footage way better. And that actually looks pretty good. So that should work. Um, that should work well. So now we can kind of bring in our actual uh, object. But first, I actually want to get the uh, the reflection set up. So I'm going to just kind of move this cube out of the way, and I'm going to add in a UV sphere. So Shift A, add in UV sphere. Now you can hit Control Two to add a subdivision surface to that, and then we can over in our settings here. Let me see go to um, make this a little bit bigger. You know what, we can move into our 3D view completely now. So let's just go closing this off and hit smooth shading there. So now in side view, I'm going to hit number pad one and move that sphere up so it's sitting on the ground there. Scale it down a bit in size and hit Z and just kind of drop it onto the floor there. Now this is, I'm gonna make a mirrored ball. So to do that, I'm just going to split my window real quick so I can open up the node editor. And here, I just close off these windows with N. I'm going to add a material to this. So a new material. And then give that material a glossy. So right now it's diffuse. I'm just going to click on that node and hit X. Shift A, shader, glossy. So add in a glossy shader. Connect that to the surface and give it a roughness value of about 0 0.002. So it's mostly mirrored. Okay, so now you can see that it will be completely glossy if I want to render view. But before I do that, I wanna open up my environment map. Now, if you watched my 10 tips on filming footage for visual effects, you'll see that I shot an environment map and I recommend to always shoot an environment map of the location that you shot your footage. And this can be done with pretty much any cell phone nowadays, so if you're interested in doing that, get the app for that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and open that up now. So I'm going to go to my world settings, choose use nodes. 
I can uncheck the ambient occlusion that's turned on by automatic in the camera tracker, but I don't need it. And then I'm going to open up my environment map. So I'm going to choose environment texture there and then click open. And I'm going to grab the environment map that I shot. I believe it's this one. So now if I hit number pad five, if I jump to my camera settings, I'm going to turn on GPU just for rendering and uh, go rendered. And now you can see my, uh, my world is in the, uh, the scene. And this is basically an environment map of the location that I shot that footage at. Awesome. So now what I can do is in camera view, I want to orientate the, uh, the glossiness from my scene to match that of the footage. So to do this, it's very simple. I'm going to switch to my world nodes right here. Click that. And you can see we have our environment image there connected to our background like I just did here. So every time you change something over here, it's also changing it over here. Um, I'm just going to hit Shift A, add in a texture coordinate. So right there, input texture coordinate, and then a converter mapping node, or vector mapping node. Select generated and connect that to the vector, and then the vector to the vector. Now this is just some tools to orientate our uh, our background so it lines up with our footage. So I'm going to go to rendered view. And I want to place that house in the background here like you could see in the video. So I'm going to rotate along the Z until the house is roughly in the corner there. And that's about all I have to do. So now you can see if I go to transparent here in my render tab, choose transparent, you can see that we have realistic reflections going on in our scene. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can see scrubbing through here that we have... Um, our ball sticking to our floor, and if we go to rendered, it's going to be reflecting everything in the scene. Awesome, but we're not finished yet. What we want to do now is we want to add shadows. So what I'm going to do for that is go Shift A and add in a plane with my cursor in the center there. If it's not, you can hit Shift S, cursor to center, and then Shift A, add in a plane. Scale that up to be uh, about appropriate for your scene, something like that's good and then hit M and move it to the bottom layer. All right, so this is because we want it on two different layers because we'll be adding them together later. So go ahead and hold shift now and click that bottom one to turn that layer on. And up in our render layer settings here, you can see that we have two settings, the foreground and the background. The, uh, the background is this shadow layer basically. And you can see here, if you click background, it's on layer one or two I guess this would be and foreground is on layer one so that's perfect and we also have a set that the foreground is going to mask the bottom layer this was all set up by default though when we clicked the uh, the render uh, the setup tracking scene settings so um, if you didn't click that go ahead and click it and um, all right so now with this plane selected we can go to our render settings here and this is where you will need to be using blender 2.0 8 or 2.9 beta or 2.78 beta i'm sorry but the uh, the blender build version right now like i said in the beginning so you'll want to make sure you're using that otherwise you won't see this setting um if you're already running blender 2.8 then you're in the future uh, or 2.78 <laughs> i'm sorry again then you're in the future and um you'll already have the setting anyways so go ahead and choose shadow catcher this is a really cool setting which basically means that this object is nothing but catching shadows so if we go rendered you'll see nothing but the shadow and not that plane. And that's perfect because we want it to, uh, we want it to be just there for the shadows. All right, we can drop that cube a little bit down. And uh, the last thing is going to be to set up the lighting. So I'm gonna grab the lamp here that comes in the scene by default, and I'm gonna change it to a sun lamp. So click sun under your lamp settings, click use nodes. I'm gonna give it just a tiny bit of an orange hue to kind of match our footage. And then I'm going to give it a strength of about seven. Now I just kind of want to orientate it to match the sun in my scene. Now I know it was a pretty late sun. It was kind of coming across the scene like this and maybe slightly rotated. All right. So I'm just moving around with my middle mouse cursor here. And that looks about the proper sun angle. So now going into my camera settings, if you go rendered, you can see that we have the shadow nice and long there, kind of matching the shadows and everything else. You can tweak this if it's uh, if it's a little bit um, too long of shadows, you think, or something. But um, I think that looks about right. Let's go ahead and give this cube 
material. Let's give it a darker gray. All right. Now, uh, the last thing we're going to do, actually, I think there's about two things left, is add the motion blur. So for motion blur, you're going to go to your render settings here. You're going to go down to motion blur and just check that box there. And this is basically the shutter speed that it was shot at. Now, I know that this was shot at about a 1 20th on my camera or something like that around those lines. So just dropping this down to about a 0.1. 1, 2 maybe, is going to be enough motion blur. Um, if you want to increase that, you can really see the motion blur going on, but we want to match the footage. So you can see this is working, though, if you go to a spot where there's kind of a jumpiness in your scene, like so, and um, hit Save. Then I'm going to hit F12 to render it, and you can see, well, it's still pretty sharp. Um, but I want to change it to be more, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And... Um, I also want to change my GPU tile size here real quick. If you're running on GPU, you're better off rendering on a bigger tile size. Okay, so doing a quick render here, you should be able to see that motion blur, yeah, in effect. But that's way too much. So I'm going to kind of turn that way down to about, well, maybe just a point two, so we can see a little bit more of it. All right, so now going render, we can see what it's looking like all combined. So there's our objects. There's our shadows. You can see we might want to make that plane a little bit bigger if we're leaving the sun at that angle. And um, give that a second to render. There we go. And then, all right, now we're getting black. And that is just because we haven't set it up in the compositor yet. But we'll do that in a second. So I might want to make my sun angle a little less severe. I don't think it's quite so harsh. And um, let's make this plane a little bit bigger just so it covers all the shadows. We can kind of move it over there so there's more space. All right, cool. And now you also might have noticed the amount of fireflies in the scene. Um, we can set a few settings here to kind of correct that. In the, uh, let me see here. In the light paths, we can choose filter glossy and give that a one, and that's gonna help quite a bit. So now if I render, we should see that being, uh, being yeah, much less fireflies, they call it, the noise, the highlights. All right, so this is rendering out pretty quick now. And you can see that we fixed that shadow issue by moving the plane. And uh, we're ready to add everything kind of together to see it working. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and add the uh, the final vehicle into our scene to get kind of a cool model. So now I'm going to switch to my compositor. Save. And you can see we have some nodes here. These were kind of messed up from the automatic thing. I guess it's not working quite right now. But that's fine. We don't even need them. We can just delete them and then we can add them in ourselves. So we're gonna want a render layer. So input render layers. We can duplicate this so we have our background and our foreground. Change the bottom one to background. And then we're gonna wanna add in our movie clip. So add input, movie clip. And you can see that movie is already there from before. And then there is one other option and that is movie distortion. You wanna make it undistorted. So drop that in and then drop the clip onto that. Cool. So that's all we really need. Now we're just going to use some alpha over nodes. So I'm going to drop in an alpha over. And we're going to start with our footage in the top socket and our shadows on the bottom socket. So if you go to that now, you can see it's our footage with the shadows in it. And uh, you don't have to worry about any of these settings. They really don't make a difference in this case. But um, now I'm going to duplicate that alpha over node one more time, shift D, click, and um, drop in this in the bottom socket now. So our objects, and you can see there's our objects added to our scene. And uh, it's looking pretty good, except for the fact that you might have noticed that you see the white surface in the shot, and you don't want that. So to fix that, all you have to do is grab our floor here, and in our render settings here, cycle settings, change it to uh, not show up in the glossy, the diffuse, the volume scatter and transmission. If you do that, when you render it again, which I'll do real quick here, just by clicking that render box on the mirror ball, you can see, well, there's no composite. So I forgot to drop in one node here, and that's the input composite node. Let me see here. Where is it at? Output composite node. Okay, grab that one. Connect that up real quick. And now, click that render option once more. And you'll see 
that the white in our scene is gone. So that is something that we want to get rid of. Cool. So now you can see that that mirror ball is fitting nicely into our scene. Perfect. And I think we can add a little bit more motion blur to our scene as well. So I'm going to crank that up to about a 0.25 or maybe just a 0.3. All right, so now we're ready to add an actual object, not just a glossy ball, but an actual object to our scene. So one thing that we need to uh, we need to fix here is our scales off a little bit. We want our render scene here to be the same as movie clip. Well, actually we want the movie clip to be the same as our render scene. And you can see that this is rendered at 50%. So all I have to do is drop in a distort scale node, drop it in here and change it to render size. Now you can see the size is back to being how it was before. And there you have it. There's our reflections, our shadows, all combined in with live footage. So I'm going to save my Blender file, and we're going to add an actual object to our scene. So for the object that I chose, it was a model I found off BlendSwap. It was by Chris Kuhn, I believe. Shout out to Chris Kuhn. Thanks for making these awesome models and giving them away for free. Um, you can go ahead and download that with the link in the description. But uh, go ahead and import that now. I'm going to go to default here, close that out. And I'm just going to move my two objects here to a different layer. So hit M, move them to a different layer. And then I'm going to go File, Append. And this is how you grab a, uh, a file or a blend file from a, a different blend. I'm going to go ahead and jump to my uh, right here, Max's Interceptor. Actually, I'm just going to grab the one I tweaked a little bit here. And I'll give a link to it in the description. So Max's Interceptor, there we have it. You just have to grab that green box to really orientate it. And I'm just gonna rotate it around the, on the Z axis here a little bit. Place it in our shot wherever we want it. If you hit Z, you can kinda see through. Something like that. Um, I think I wanna scale it up a little bit more. That looks about right. And then I'm gonna have to raise it up so the tires aren't falling through the ground too much. Something around there looks uh, Looks about right though. Maybe it's a little bit high. In which case, um, well, actually I wanna drop the camera down just a little bit. Yeah, because you wanna make sure that your tracking markers are on the ground. Um, I think it actually looks pretty good though. And so now if we go, let's pull it forward just a little bit more there. Yeah, a little closer to the camera. And one other thing you can do is to your camera settings here, you can give it a little bit of depth of field. Now there's not much depth of field in this scene. I just clicked limits there. But um, you can go ahead and set up the depth of field um, just in case you might notice it in some scenes. So you change the distance here and now because I clicked limits, you can see we have this crosshair. We just wanna line that up on our object of focus and then type in the aperture that you shot your footage with. Now I know this was about a aperture of an eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put eight. Well, I might go something slightly lower just because um, you won't notice it anyways, but just so in case you might notice it a little bit, there'll be a little something there. All right, so now we have our object and uh, it's dropped in our scene. If I go rendered, we can see what this is looking like here. Give it a second to load everything up and whoa, I have to change that to aperture or f-stop, I'm sorry. There we go. So there's our object in our scene and it's looking, uh, it's looking pretty cool. Few things though, uh, I think the scale is off a little bit, a little bit too big, and um, it's not really blending that well. Um, you can see that the tires are kind of sitting on the grass weird, and that's why, like I said in the beginning, we want to add in some vegetation. So um, I'm going to be using some grass from my Nature Asset Pack. Um, if you're interested in picking up the Nature Asset Pack yourself, it's on the Blender Market just for 10 bucks. Otherwise, I have a tutorial, where well, there'll be a link on the screen right now for that, where you can go create some of your own grass to uh, drop in your scene. So either one of those works, and go ahead and get the grass. So I'm going to go ahead and append that as well. I'm just going to grab the grass file right there that I already have set up. And again, I want to move these to a different layer. So these are my grass my grass objects, I'm just gonna move them to, uh, we'll go down to that layer. And now I'm going to add in a new plane. So on layer one, I'm going to shift A, add in a plane, scale it up a little bit, tab into edit mode with tab, hit W, subdivide, and we're gonna do that multiple times so we have enough vertices to work with there. 
And now I'm going to go to particle settings, new particle system. I'm going to choose hair. I'm going to choose advanced. I'm going to scroll down. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast here. I know um, this is going quick, but these are very simple settings. And uh, you can slow the video down if you need to really see what I'm clicking. But just scrolling down, going group, and then choosing the grass group. I'm going to choose rotation. So they're all standing up in the right orientation. And now I'm going to go to weight paint, and I'm going to paint in where I want this grass. So now I'm going to go option H in object mode. I'm going to go option H. Whoops, i got to move my car object to the right layer. It's on the wrong layer right now. Move it to layer 1. And I also need to move my lamp to both layers. So hold shift and click that, and now it's on both layers. So it's on the bottom layer and the top layer. Cool. So now just on layer one, I'm going to go to weight paint mode, and I'm going to paint in where I want the grass to be uh, on my scene. So I'm going to make sure my setting is set right, set to draw with a strength of about 0.43 should work. And I'm going to paint in around the tires here. Where I want to add in some CG grass basically to kind of blend it into our scene and make it look realistic. So just around the tires and kind of underneath the car where you really kind of see it is the only places you have to worry about. So something like that is going to go a long way in uh, realism. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now that I have that weight paint map made, I can go down into vertex groups and select that group right there in the density. And you can see it's all tucked around our tires. You can also choose length, and this is going to give it the, uh, the length of the group. So the areas that are more dense are going to be longer. And I'm just going to crank the size up a bit, the random size up a bit. And then I'm going to choose rotation, check that box on rotation, change the phase, and then the random phase. So they're not orientated all the same way. And then we can drop the amount down to just be something like 300. We don't need too much grass. So if we go render now, we can see that we have, give it a second. And there you have it. We have our grass around our tires. Now you can see there's some black in the grass. That's just because we need to go to our render settings here. And on our, our light paths, we need to give it more transparent passes. So I'm just going to give that 32 on both of them. And then one more thing, we don't want the plane with the particles on it to render. So you scroll down and you click emitter. Uncheck it so it doesn't render the emitter. So when I switch to rendered view, we'll see just the grass and not the plane. All right, so that's very cool, and uh, we should be ready to render our scene. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on both those layers, go to camera view, save our scene, and go ahead and hit F12 to render. Okay, and this is what we're getting. So it's looking uh, it's looking okay, but there's definitely a few areas that need some work. Um, our shadows are a little harsh, so you can tone those down a little bit, at least soften them up a little bit. By um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sun settings. So let me kind of keep this window up so I can see what our results is looking like. But I'm going to go to 3D view and our sun settings. I'm going to make the size of it to be a little less large. So it's a little softer shadow. So I'm going to go 0 0.06. That's just going to make the shadows a little bit softer. Now, um, secondly, I want to turn off a few things on our background layer. So automatically it's set up to take the shadow and AO, but that's just slowing down our render time a little bit. And we don't need to worry about that. And another tip is you don't need as many samples for your background. So you can give the background scene about 64 samples and that's all you really need for the, uh, the background because you don't need as many samples on the shadows as you do like the glossy materials on your truck or car, or whatever you're putting into your, uh, your scene. So there we have it. Those two settings changed. We can do another render and uh, kind of see if we're getting an acceptable result now. Um, I think that's going to do it. Let's go ahead and give her one more render and see what she's looking like. Okay, and there we have a little softer shadows. And uh, we can do some more tweaks in the compositor now to get a nice finished result. So switching back to the compositor again. First off, we don't want a hundred percent shadows. So because we do this in two layers, we can take our bottom layer now and turn it down to just be about 0.92, maybe a little bit more. 
Um, if you want to kind of get exact, holding down Alt and clicking, you can see the black, white, um, red, red, green, and blue values. So you can kind of match the darkest shadow on your scene, which is pretty dark right here. It's about a 0, 0, 4 to the darkest shadow in your footage, which is about a, uh, well, not quite that dark. It's about a 0, 0, 009. Same over here. So that kind of means that you can check the shadows in here too a little bit. That kind of means that our shadows are a little bit too dark here. So we can uh, lighten them up a little bit more by changing the uh, the factor of how much we added in. So now if I hit Alt and click it, you can see that we're about a 0 0.003, 0 0.004, 0 0.008. So it's looking better, maybe just a little bit less still. And uh, that's looking, uh, looking a little bit better. Now we can do some color grading to kind of blend this in a little bit better as well. And that's going to be hitting Shift A, adding in a color, color balance node. Now I usually use the color formula here, but this is actually going to be more accurate, um, switching it to the offset slope. So just go ahead and do that. Now this is our black value to our scene basically. And because there's nothing that's completely black in our scene, because of the, the way the footage is shot, I can take this and make it a little less black. Pretty close to black, so about a 0 0.07 is about good I think but not completely black. Um, so I'm gonna also give it a little bit of an orange hue, just because everything else is, or red hue. I'm gonna give that a 0 0.6, 0 0.6, leaving that at 0.7. So everything is a little bit orangey. Um, and that looks that looks pretty good. Now you can change a little bit of the other colors, like the, the power. You might wanna make that, well, you wanna go very subtle, but you might wanna make that slightly bluish which is going to give you actually a slightly orangish color. That's just the way these work, but um, I don't know the technical aspects of it, but I just know how to use it, <laughs> barely. So now we're going to also want to give it a little bit of an orangish color here just to kind of match the uh, the shot. Um, all right, and here we can kind of change the, uh, the exposures a little bit too by brightening these just to kind of match the whites and blacks of our scene a little bit better. But that looks pretty good. Something around there. Uh, doesn't look bad. And again, you might want to take the shadows a little bit lighter, just because they're a little bit harsh. But um, overall, I'd say that looks uh, that looks pretty realistic. So um, yeah, you can do as much tweaking as you want, but you can see that the grass we added in is um, blending it into the scene a little bit better. One thing is the sharpness. It's, it's, the scene is still a little bit overly sharp. So what I'll do sometimes is just add in a blur node. So go ahead and add a blur node. Um, there's a handful of different blur nodes you can use. I actually found that using the bokeh blur way turned down looks the best. Up, it's way too high. But if you make it way turned down, just like a 0 0.01, um, let's go a little bit more and see if we're seeing it. 0 0.1 is a little bit too harsh, maybe 0 0.05, a little bit more maybe. Just so you get that tiny bit of blur that uh, kind of makes it match your footage. Because overly sharp footage doesn't work. So yeah, there we have it. I'm just hitting, if you're wondering how I'm zooming in, it's V and Alt V. But I'm just zooming in here and now you can see that the blurriness kind of matches that of the footage. So it looks a bit better. So there you have it guys, that is the uh, the visual effect compositing. Now the last thing I want to show you guys is how to render this out as an animation, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are asking that, and sometimes you get upset if I skip that in my tutorials. So I'm going to quick show you how to do that. So, first off, you want to set up your render settings. Um, set the frame rate to be the 29, like it was shot. You can make it 100% if you want, or um, you, can you can render it out at half resolution, but for your final one, you want to go 100%. Um, choose your file format. Now first you're going to render it as a image sequence. This is just because if you're rendering it as a movie file and it gets cancelled halfway through it, you can't resume it. But if it's an image sequence, you can always resume to the last image saved out and continue. So I'm just going to change it to JPEG. And you're just going to choose a location on your, um, on your hard drive where you want to save the files out. And then uh, you're pretty much ready to go. So you're going to click Render Animation and it's gonna go through and render every frame one after another. 
Now, I'm not going to do this. I already rendered these scenes out. But if you wanted to do that, you'd just leave that go. And it would jump from frame 1 all the way to frame 250, rendering them out. Now, I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to do that. But um, And if it got canceled somewhere in, mid in the middle there, you know, without it being finished, you would just uncheck Overwrite. And then rendering in the same folder, click Render Animation. And it will automatically resume at the last frame rendered. So that's a nice little feature. Okay, so once you have all your frames saved out then, you're going to save your project, and you go to your movie clip editor, video editor. Here you're going to jump to frame 1, and hit Shift A, add an image, then you're going to grab your frames, here you can see I have all the frames rendered out, you're going to hit A to select all of the frames, and then add image strip. Then you can see we have a, uh, a long strip here, and that's all of our images loaded in. If I scrub through it, you can see it's our car in our footage, like so. And if you want to save this now as a video file, you would go back to default, you would go to your render settings here, you would change it to something like, um, well, I don't really have many options here, but um, usually I have like an H.264 option. Um, I don't have it here because this is the early version of Blender, but you would change it to something like H.264 and then, um, in your encoding samples, change it to something like MP4. But um, for now, you can do an AVI render or something. doesn't matter. Um, if you're on a Mac, you might have some quick time options there, so you might want to set it to that. But pick a movie format, and then you go render animation, and then it's going to render really quickly just out of the video sequence editor, saving out a, a movie file. As you can see, it's doing a sequence render now, just putting all your frames together. So I'm going to cancel that again, but that's how it's done. So that's going to wrap things up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video tutorial series. Not series, but just video on doing uh, visual effects in Blender. Let me know if you liked the video with a thumbs up. Let me know if you didn't like the video with a thumbs down. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Um, leave a suggestion for a future tutorial, maybe. And uh, I'll see you guys in a future video. So, bye!